and I really hope you enjoy the conference. In this session, I'm going to talk to you about Elasticsearch uh, and why is it essential not only for uh, developers, administrators, but also for QA engineers. Um, just a few words about me. My name is Martin. I'm currently uh, so a solution architect at the European Patient Office where we deal with anything related to uh, patients specifically uh, on the European market. I'm also one of the guys that helps um, organize the events of the Bulgarian Java User Group and primarily uh, one other conference that we organized called J Prime. Now, before we start talking about Elasticsearch, uh, it is essential to mention that Elasticsearch gains more and more popularity in recent years. And it's been widely deployed in a variety of scenarios, such as, for example, for log aggregation as a NoSQL database, for data analytics, analytics, and so on and so forth. And primarily, the Elasticsearch stack is centered around Elasticsearch and includes different applications, such as Elasticsearch being at the center of the Elk stack, Kibana as the main user interface that uh, allows you to interact with Elasticsearch, Logstash as a data, uh, data uh, ingestion pipeline that provides the capability to uh, put data in Elasticsearch or different uh, sources um, by means of various plugins. Uh, Beats, which, are, uh, which is a collective name for a number of applications that allow you to uh, collect data from different data sources such as the file system uh, or syslog uh, entries and so on and so forth. Uh, Elasticsearch in fact, it's a full-text search engine with numerous capabilities. Uh, and at present, Elasticsearch is one of the most uh, widely deployed solutions for uh, search uh, that allows you to do uh, a number of uh, interesting things on the data that's being aggregated. Uh, this is how the different applications from the Elk stack interact with each other. And the setter, we have Elasticsearch that's used to index and store uh, data uh, and we'll talk about that uh, in a few slides. Uh, we have Kibana that allows you to interact with Elasticsearch but provides a large amount of additional uh, nice capabilities like for example the possibility to build visualizations and dashboards. We have Logstash for data aggregation and Beats that allow you to put data uh, in Elasticsearch either through Logstash or directly to Elasticsearch. Uh, you can think of Elasticsearch as a web server built on top of the Lucene Java library. Uh, essentially, you can use directly uh, Lucene in your uh, applications, for example. However, it lacks a number of capabilities like uh, clustering, additional advanced uh, caching, uh, also uh, a way to easily query uh, data that's stored uh, through Lucene. And for that reason, uh, Elasticsearch, in fact, builds a web server on top of the Apache Lucene library to provide all of those missing capabilities. Uh, there are a number of capabilities provided by Elasticsearch. And in fact, one of the main mechanisms to interact with Elasticsearch is through a really nice JSON-based REST API. Uh, and in the, in the demo that will follow, we'll have a look into it. Internally, Elasticsearch uh, interacts uh, with Lucene um, by uh, creating uh, a different number of Elasticsearch charts. So when you create an Elasticsearch index, we need to specify what's the number of primary charts um, that distribute the data in the Elasticsearch cluster and what's the number of replica charts that replicates data across nodes in the cluster. In effect, each Elasticsearch chart uh, is uh, a Lucene index. And that Lucene index stores data in one or more Lucene segments, which are the actual physical files on the file system uh, that allow Lucene to uh, store persistently uh, the data that's indexed through Elasticsearch. When, you, when we uh, execute a write request to write data to Elasticsearch, uh, the data is first sent to a so-called coordinating node in the Elasticsearch cluster. Uh, and from that, that node, in fact, coordinates the uh, document that's being written in Elasticsearch to a particular shard or to a particular node in the Elasticsearch cluster. From there, the, the data is not written directly uh, on disk in, a, in one or more Lucene segments, 
But first, uh, Elasticsearch provides um, two main uh, areas in memory called memory buffer and transaction lock to store the data. And by default, the memory buffer is flushed every uh, second on the disk and the transaction lock uh, flushes every 30 minutes or when it gets too big. So in fact, you, when you write some document to Elasticsearch, you cannot expect that it's available for searches right away. Uh, but also you can uh, force um, indexing to persist the data right away. But by default, that's not the case. Internally, Elasticsearch is comprised of different modules. Uh, and some of the core modules of Elasticsearch are, for example, Discover and Cluster Formation uh, that provides the main capabilities for uh, nodes in an Elasticsearch cluster to communicate and to discover each other. We have HTTP module that provides the REST-based API of Elasticsearch. We have other modules like plugins, for example, that allow you to build uh, different plugins for Elasticsearch. And the Elasticsearch ecosystem con contains a large number of plugins, both uh, developed by uh, Elastic and by the Elasticsearch community. We have other internal modules like trade pools and transport, for example, um, that provide uh, capabilities for uh, Elasticsearch to execute different tasks. Uh, internally uh, and to provide additional communication layer uh, for the Elasticsearch nodes. The basic data structure used by Elasticsearch is an inverted index. Uh, and uh, the reason that Elasticsearch uses that uh, data structure is that it provides really nice capabilities when we talk about uh, searching for data. Indexes are stored uh, on disk in separate files, as we already mentioned, by means of Lucene segments. Uh, and another nice um, capability is that searches can be performed on multiple indexes at once. In earlier versions of Elasticsearch, documents used to be grouped locally by type, uh, but that's not uh, the case. It's been deprecated in version 7.0 of Elasticsearch. And the index is the primary unit uh, of uh, grouping of documents that are indexed in Elasticsearch. In order to ensure relevancy, uh, Elasticsearch uses a few algorithms to calculate the relevance score for a document. The relevance, relevance score, uh, in fact, determines how are uh, documents uh, returned by default from Elasticsearch uh, based, of course, on the relevance score. And the default one used is the TF-IDF algorithm or Term Frequency in First Document Frequency, uh, which provides two main uh, criteria for determining how relevant uh, a term is in a document. So the first criteria is how many times does this term uh, occur in the document? And the second criteria is how many times does this term occur across all currently indexed documents in target index? Uh, one may think why shall we use Elasticsearch for searches uh, instead of directly, uh, for example, interacting with a relational database that the application may already use? And the reason is that in a number of scenarios, uh, Elasticsearch provides faster retrieval of documents than a traditional relational database. A traditional relational database, as most of you know, uses indexes that provide the possibility to speed up uh, searches across database tables. And those indexes are implemented using uh, different data searches like a B-tree or a hash table uh, structure. However, uh, Elasticsearch uh, and the inverted index provide uh, better capabilities for uh, more types of search queries. As you know, in a traditional relational database, indexes pose limitation uh, in, uh, based on the types of queries uh, that they can be applied on. Uh, in Elasticsearch, the other main difference with the uh, uh, traditional relational database is that documents might not have an explicit schema specified. If you don't specify an explicit schema uh, for the documents stored in um, Elasticsearch, which, by the way, are uh, based on JSON format, uh, then Elasticsearch tries to deduct the schema itself. So if you don't have uh, a schema defined for an index, Elasticsearch creates one for you. Uh, certain document fields can match uh, a pattern that uh, identifies their field type or so-called dynamic mapping. So you can define uh, a type for uh, not just one, but multiple types of fields based on a pattern. Uh, and the same field, in fact, can be indexed multiple times using different uh, mechanisms or different types 
uh, in the same index. Now let's talk a bit about Kibana. As we mentioned, Kibana uh, is the standard user interface that provides a number of additional tools to simplify interaction with Elasticsearch. It also provides capabilities to create uh, different kinds of visualizations, uh, dashboards that allow you to uh, collect uh, visualizations. It also provides a really nice browser-based interface that allows you to write queries against Elasticsearch REST API. Logstash, as we mentioned earlier, is a data collection engine with pipeline processing capabilities. It provides integration with a variety of uh, third-party data sources like message queues such as RabbitMQ or Kafka, relational databases, and so on and so forth. It was originally targeted to, um, to be used for log aggregation, but in fact, uh, in a number of scenarios, Logstash has been applied as a data integration pipeline, not only for log aggregation, but in fact for uh, any different number of scenarios that provide uh, integration points with Elasticsearch or even other systems. Uh, data in Logstash is processed in an input, filter, output manner. Uh, output data is typically stored in Elasticsearch, but it may be stored uh, somewhere else uh, based on the output plugin being specified. And in fact, Logstash provides a number of third-party plugins that we can use for the purpose. This bits is a series of applications uh, or a set of so-called log shippers, uh, and each bit application um, is lightweight in nature, which means that it uh, aims to collect as low resources as possible in terms of CPU memory and so on. And each bit application is um, targeted to provide a mechanism to ship data either to uh, Logstash or to Elasticsearch directly. Also in, in Elasticsearch, there is something called XPack, which is a set of extra features for the Elasticsearch stack. Uh, in earlier versions, uh, some of the features provided by the XPack uh, extension were in fact part of the licensed version of Elasticsearch. Uh, but in recent versions of Elasticsearch, more and more capabilities uh, have been uh, provided in the free version of Elasticsearch. This is, for example, many of the security features of Elasticsearch. Uh, and, however, there are still uh, some capabilities part of XPack that are part of the licensed versions of Elasticsearch. These are just some of the scenarios where Elasticsearch is used uh, in practice. For example, Wikipedia Search uses Elasticsearch. Volkswagen uses uh, Elasticsearch for distributed monitoring and logging. GitHub code search is based on Elasticsearch Stack Overflow. Even companies like Blizzard use Elasticsearch to generate actionable data from gameplay. So as you can see, Elasticsearch has been widely deployed in a number of scenarios and continues to be deployed in a number of projects. Now let's see how Elasticsearch works in action. I started locally an instance of um, Elasticsearch in Kibana, which is as simple as running a bat file. And it runs, in fact, Elasticsearch uh, and Kibana with default configuration, such as default port, default, default security settings, and so on and so forth. Once Elasticsearch and Kibana started, uh, you can open Kibana on default uh, port 5601. And in fact, in Kibana, we have two main capabilities to interact with Elasticsearch. Uh, one of them is, uh, is the discover view. And the Discover view provides a, a so-called KQL or Kibana query language, which is a simplified query language that allows you to query Elasticsearch data in a more easy manner. However, uh, most people prefer the uh, most flexible way, and that's the uh, Kibana Dev Console, which uh, uses the, uh, Kibana, uh, the Elasticsearch query language uh, to interact with Elasticsearch. Now we are going to create uh, a mapping for an index. I have one already pre-configured. So I'm going to create an index called log data. And for that, I just need to execute a put request. And uh, that index uh, has certain configuration. First, we have the settings block, which defines how many shards do we want that index to have across the Elasticsearch uh, nodes in the Elasticsearch cluster. Currently, I have just one node. Uh, and then we define how many replica nodes do we want to um, uh, create for high availability. However, uh, based on those two criteria, the number of primary shards 
it's more difficult to change because that would typically require um, uh, reindexing of data. So that's why it's good that um, when one creates an index, it, uh, he carefully plans what's the number of primary shards. The number of replica shards can more easily be changed on the fly. Then we have mappings, and mappings in fact defines what are the different types of fields of the documents that are being indexed in that index. So in that mapping, we define uh, different fields for our log data. We have log date, which is of type date and we specify the formats uh, of the data that arrives to Elasticsearch. We have thread ID. Imagine that it's a, a Java or .NET application and it's in the log entry we store the thread from which that log entry was created. We also have the log level, which might be, for example, info, fatal, warning, and so on. And we have the, the actual log message. And that defines actually the, the settings and the mapping of our log data index. Now, if we execute that from the uh, developer console, uh, we should see that, uh, that uh, the index mapping is created just fine. And now we can start manipulating our index. First, I'm going to use a so-called bulk API, which allows me to put uh, multiple uh, records at once in Elasticsearch. So the bulk API, uh, we use a post request to the index uh, with uh, this bulk um, request. And then on each line, we specify the documents that we want to put. So on the first line, I specify that I put a document with an ID of two. Each document in Elasticsearch has a unique ID that identifies it. And this ID can be created in multiple times. We either specify it explicitly when we index a document, if we, or if we omit it, Elasticsearch creates it for us, or it might be our application that somehow generates it. Uh, so I, I put several entries, in fact, uh, we have one entry which is of level, with level info. Uh, it determines that this is a sort algorithm that has been executed. Then another entry which is with debug, uh, two more entries which are with uh, debug level. Uh, and that's it. So now let's index those entries uh, in, in our document. Uh, all right, so I have some new lines here, which I need to uh, remove, which, in fact, uh, break the query. Now we can execute again. Oops, so what we have, uh, again, some... Заповядайте в голямата зала. Започваме след 5 минути. 5 минути. Очакваме ви за началото на следващата лекция в голямата зала, която ще бъде доста интересна. 5 минути до началото на следващата лекция. Okay, let's uh, make it easier. I'll just put one entry here. And as we can see, uh, this entry is being uh, created. So now we have just one entry in our index. We can uh, get the entry uh, by different mechanisms. So for example, I can get um, uh, just an entry with a document ID of uh, 2, which is the uh, ID of the document that I just indexed. And as you can see, this document gets returned by Elasticsearch. I can also uh, delete documents by ID. So, for example, here I can specify uh, missing ID of that document. Uh, so, as I can see, uh, it's not deleting anything. It's just saying that this document is not found. I can also update documents. And updating in Elasticsearch, in fact, does not modify the document. But, in fact, it creates a new uh, document with a new version. So, uh, in fact... Uh, Update of documents creates a new version of, uh, of that document with the modified data. Uh, and as you can see, we can perform pretty much basic root operations like in a standard uh, database. Now, uh, the actual mechanism that allows us to create for data from an index is uh, through the search uh, API, which uh, implements the Elasticsearch query language. And the most uh, simple type of query I can uh, specify is the match all query. As you can see here, when I type, I have really nice auto completion provided in, by Kibana. 
And if I do a, a much all query here, uh, I see that I get just one result. And that's the document that I indexed earlier to the bulk API. Uh, now, what we can do, for example, uh, we can also do uh, other types of queries. Uh, so, for example, we can run a match query. A match query uh, allows me to search in a particular field, like, for example, uh, the log message field. I can search for all the documents that have the sort term stored. And as you can see, I have one document return that contains the sort term, which is this one. Now, if we want to see how is this document, in fact, analyzed internally by Elasticsearch, I can, uh, in fact, use the Analyze API for the purpose. Uh, as the analyzer, I can use the default one, which is which is being used by Elasticsearch. An analyzer, in fact, specifies how uh, the, the target field is analyzed by Elasticsearch. The default analyzer, in fact, uh, splits the document in terms by uh, white space, special symbols, and so on, and also uh, makes the terms internally uh, lowercase. And apart from the analyzer, I, I can also specify the text for uh, which I want to um, check for. Uh, this is I take the text from my log message. So now let's see what this returns. Uh, if I run the analyze query, I see that uh, uh, this is how this text gets split into tokens internally. I have example sort algo as one token, then entered. Uh, the sort method. As you can see, I can then uh, use any of the uh, uh, query capabilities of Elasticsearch to search by those tokens uh, that's, that are stored uh, as part of this document uh, internally. Now we have a number of other types of queries. I'm not going to demonstrate all of them, but for example, we, we can also do a match face prefix query where we can just search by uh, a term prefix. Let's say And we we're waiting for you inside. You can watch uh, online uh, or offsite. I don't know what is that called. Uh, you can watch the end of this uh, lecture, which is uh, playing right now, inside of the hall. So we we're waiting for you for the next speaker who is live. <laughs>